Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be learning about a whole bunch of really cool things here in Sky Factory 4. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today we're going to be doing exactly what we were waiting on doing last episode, which is taking that boron that we got from our Miscraft world over here, and we're going to be pumping it out of this world into our main world, in which we are going to convert that into ingots and get that sent into our system. So yeah, this is going to be an automation process of showing you how to do this, and so you should be able to utilize this with any material that you gather from Miscraft Dimensions. Um, most of the materials that you'll see here will be fluids, like liquids in the, the li big lakes and oceans and things like that. So it's best to kind of do that. Um, and yeah, like I said, you're gonna, the more you explore, the more you're gonna find different materials. I mean, you can find molten iron, you can find molten uh, aridite. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. You can find some premium, all that stuff should be there. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. I have some things in my chest here. This is a pump from Range Pumps. Very simple to make. And I think this is one of the better of the pumps um, that you can get. There's ingot former, which we're gonna be using here. We have an ender tank, which is what we're gonna to use to transfer it cross dimensionally. We have a weirding gadget, which is going to keep that dimension chunk loaded. Um, keep that, that chunk in the area of the pump working chunk loaded, because I think this works in a five by five chunks, if I believe. Um, we're gonna need a fluid extraction to pull out of the pump and a point to power the pump, because it still, I believe, requires power. And I think a lever is the only other thing I am missing. Good old fashioned lever, because I think the pump requires a lever in order to function. And then of course, die to die or tank. So with all this in mind, let's go ahead and head to the dimension, which is right here. And uh, we're gonna take this with us and uh, take all these materials and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. So now that we're in this dark world, I think what we should do is turn on our night vision um, so that we can kind of see, and then this is a pretty decent sized area um, that has boron in it. And I think this would be a perfect place to set up our pump. Um, now our pump doesn't need to be that far away. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this wood here, and we're gonna use this actually just to branch off and get our pump out in the middle. That should be fine. Awesome, so we're gonna go ahead and place our plump, pump right here. And like I said, I don't think, yeah, this thing needs energy. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up a, a flux point to it. Select our network, right? That should be fine. So now this should be getting plenty of energy. And you can see it is actually pulling up a boron. You can see the stone building up underneath it. So what we need to do is get ourselves a fluid extraction pipe and then take our tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and set these over here because I'm gonna dye them gray. I mean, the boron is kind of a gray color. That's where I'm going with this. And then we need to break these. There we go. Perfect, should have used the party pickaxe. So I should be able to place one of these tanks directly on here. And that is going to fill up with that molten boron and we're gonna get going. So I guess it doesn't need a lever to get started, which is fine. I can go ahead and get rid of the wood. Perfect, that's gonna burn up. By the way, yeah, don't go in this stuff because it is really hot. You probably don't wanna do that. And then we can go ahead and stick a weirding gadget down here. That's gonna keep this area chunk loaded and uh, should be able to pull out the items for us. Awesome. So with our platform being right up here, we should know exactly where that's at. Or you can set a waypoint. What I'm gonna do is place this down. Make sure you have a linking book to your other dimension. And this is how you're gonna get back and forth if you need to. So we're gonna be able to head back to our main dimension. And now we can get started on setting up the ingot former. So the ingot former shouldn't be too difficult to set up. It is going to, however, need some power. Um, I think we can probably set it up over here for right now. Maybe, maybe not. Did I misplace it? Okay, that was kind of weird. There it is. I guess there was a desync in our inventory. All right. Let's go ahead and get that set back up. <clears throat> kind of all messed up. All right, so we're gonna need to take an ender tank. I'm gonna go ahead and I can set it here. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm gonna pump into it. So technically I probably need to break that temporarily and have that pumping directly into here. And then that should be actually getting power. Oh, this doesn't require power. So we could technically put this anywhere with it not requiring power. 
That's kind of nice. It might require power though with energy upgrades. I'm not sure. We're gonna have to get some upgrades in this thing, but this should be generating ingots. There we go. Awesome. So now to get the ingots out, the only other thing I didn't grab was an item transfer node. And we might want to use, um, I guess item pipes to work is just as fine. There we go. And we're probably also going to need a GPS. Because I'm going to be sending these ingots into a very specific place. And that is going to be our export chest or import chest that's going to be importing items into our network. Which is actually back here. So we'll take this and just get this set up so that way it pulls the item right out and goes straight into here. And I think we could probably do that here. Wrong way. Hopefully it'll pull the item. Yeah, it pulls the item. Goes straight into here. We put that, that's gonna send the item out. And now we should have a constant flow of that material. And we could technically, for all the world, set up this sort of setup and put this in its own little room if we wanted to. We could even put it in a different dimension. So if we wanted to put it in our like small um, compact machine, we could put it in a compact machine and that would work just as well. So I'm taking a look at this uh, Age, of or Age of Exploration uh, quest tab. And I noticed that we're actually pretty close to being able to complete this. There's very little um, left to do. And some of these are actually really fun to do. One is, is exterminate the wither. And I think we could take out the wither pretty easy um, at this point with the current tools and, and things that we have at our uh, disposal. The other one is a hell of a boat ride, which is place water in the nether using a bucket and then place a boat on the water and then equal profit. That is gonna be really fun to do. Um, and then we also have come fly with me, which is craft a Viscraft airship to fly around. I think we can do all of those things in today's episode and uh, get it done pretty easy. So let's go ahead and talk about water. So we, can, we should be able to get a bucket grab ourself a water and make a boat. That is one of the first t t uh, steps. Um, I'm pretty sure we should have some wood laying around. There we go. Get a boat. So we need water and a boat. We also need some soul sand and heads, preferably wither skeleton skulls. Um, so we have pris uh, pristine wither skeleton matter. With that pristine wither skeleton matter, of course, we can drop that down here into our fabricator. And that should get us wither skeleton skulls. So destroying wither should be pretty easy. Uh, of course, with this shuriken, it should be very, very easy. Um, we have four modifiers. I need to upgrade this thing with quartz as well. So that is going to be something that I definitely need to do. Let's take blocks of quartz. There we go. I need to get more quartz. So let's just make some more. Perfect. So I should be able to upgrade this. Let's go ahead and do that right now. That way we can jump into everything else. So I'm just going to throw some quartz on this. That is going to just make this thing even more powerful. And we can put as much of this on there as possible for as many modifiers as we currently have. And that's just going to make this thing even more powerful. And I think this actually is pretty decent against the wither. All right. So we have that done. So we can spawn a wither and then we have Viscraft. So after we go and kill the wither and stuff, we are going to come back and work on Viscraft. Viscraft or Viscraft. I think it's called Viscraft. Um, it is a really, really cool mod. I'm not going to lie. It is definitely one of my favorites. Um, there is another wand that I wanted to kind of experiment with. Um, I think it is actually a part of cyclic. Let's see. With the water. Uh, this is vaporizes nearby water. This one freezes nearby water into ice. This one replaces flowing water with source water. That's the one I want. Okay, so buckets. I'm going to need a few buckets of water here to be able to get all this done. Perfect. 
So we'll head back up. And I just want to try what that, that one from Cyclic does. The water spreader. That's going to be kind of interesting to use. All right. Because it's supposed to convert the non-water sources into sources. So we need to go to the nether. So let's go ahead and head to the nether. So it shouldn't take us very long to get this done. We need to place a boat. At least that's what it said. Take a boat and place it on the on the ground, which we already have water down here, right? Um, so if I place this down, of course this is going to spread. Now, how does this work? Oh, wow. Okay, so if we take a boat, which we just got that done, like this, A way to travel across this 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 bed super easy. Okay, we kind of got stuck there. I don't know where our boat went, but we still completed that advancement. So I think we're I think we can call that good. Alright, so what I want to do is clear out a pretty good hole here in the uh, the nether. I think that's pretty good. And uh, what I want to go after is the wither. I currently don't have any way to trash these other than throwing this out. Alright, so let's go ahead and spawn this wither and hope this wither is not too bad to us. Okay. So this guy... Oh, this has head crumbs, that's right. Let's get her shuriken. And a hope. Ow. These shurikens work on this guy. They seem to be working pretty good. Okay, until he hit half health. Alright, that changed a little bit. Okay, he's still taking. We are flying all the way up to the top. I don't have any other weapon that can hurt him. I think the sure can stop hurting him after a certain point. This pick actually does a lot of damage. Wow. So, we completed the weather wither fight. I don't know if our nether star landed. Ah, I think it landed in the lava. That's fine. We have plenty of nether stars. I'm not too worried about it. So that was that part off the list as well. We're almost about to complete this. All we got to do is do the uh, make the Viscraft airship, which that thing is actually really cool. And I think we're going to make the top tier one today. I have no doubt that we can easily make the top tier Viscraft machine. Flying machine. Viscraft. Viscraft. <laughs> I always say it wrong. So with Viscraft... There's kind of a lot of options, right? And, um, and getting started with it is not that difficult. There is a guidebook, so if you're curious on how to get started, you can read this pretty decent guidebook. That'll show you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, it talks about all the new systems, and this has kind of changed a lot since I remember, you know, back in the day, um, Viscraft was actually a lot different um, when messing around with things. So it has completely changed. So I highly recommend you checking out this book and kind of reading over it because, like I said, the modules sec the section has changed, the upgrades have changed, things like that. So to get started, we are going to need a lot of logic chips. So might as well grab a few of those. And we're also going to need some core shards, which can be glass and, like I said, logic chips. All of these things are going to be used. Um, and then we have the shells. You're going to need some leather. You're going to need quite a bit of leather. Um, to make the base stuff. So let's go ahead and just make the base machine. So you're gonna need a core, the airship core. You're gonna need an airship frame, which is gonna require a minecart, it looks like. And like I said, this is just to get the base one. You, I think you're gonna need two engines to get started. Down here is what we're gonna be making. So yeah, two engines. So I think it just needs blocks of redstone, right? What were we missing? Pistons. 
So two of those. Um, you're going to need a balloon. And if we take a look down here to make the base airship, we're also going to need some leads. And we can make the base airship. This is what the quest is wanting you to make. This is super simple to craft. And to, to just throw it down, you hold shift and right click and you throw it like a Pokeball. And this is what you end up with. Now, currently it has no fuel in it. You can get inside, but you can't do anything. Um, what you want to do is go into options control, search for Vscraft and go into category. And you see you have a bunch of different options. You have ascend, which is space, descend, which is X. So keep that in mind. It is not shift to descend. Shift is to dismount. Um, and then you have open airship GUI. I set this to G. That's usually what I always do with this. So when you're inside, you can hit G and now you can access all of your individual parts. Um, so if you wanted to customize your frame, make it studded, you can do that. It is going to cost you though. You can see things actually cost. So in here, you can change what type of balloon your craft has. I prefer this balloon, the uh, Viscotron. I don't, I don't actually know how that's pronounced. Um, but yeah, I like changing those things. You're gonna need redstone to do that. Currently, we only can provide it with 50 redstone. So when it goes into changing the, um, the frame or balloon type, where is it at? Core options, balloon. You can see that's gonna cost 100 and we don't have that available yet. So we need to upgrade this thing. So what you can do is hold shift to get out. You, I mean, you can still fly it at this rate. It's, it's a perfectly flyable machine. It just has a limited height range. Um, so to upgrade this, we can break it down into the machine or we can just leave it. We need to start making upgrades. So a tier one upgrade is going to require the base ship core and we can go ahead and make a tier one upgrade. Now the core shards, I remember we made some, we did. So they sometimes don't show up, so just keep trying. They don't actually show up when you search Vscraft, apparently, even though they should. Um, but there's our tier one core upgrade, keep that in mind. Then we're also gonna need a frame upgrade and you gotta go through this for each one. Um, so you keep upgrading, you're going to need the base for each one. So if you want to do it all the way to five, you're going to go ahead and actually hook up five. So I'm going to go through each one of these and I'm going to go ahead and get these to the five tier upgrade. It actually isn't that expensive to do so. It just requires a little bit of crafting and uh, that's about it. So I'll come back and then we can upgrade this together. So I now have everything ready to go. We have all these upgrades made. I even made the Vaseline pellets, which this right here is actually a better fuel to use for the airship. It is your coal and redstone mixture. Very, very nice. So here is our base airship with all of our upgrades ready to go. I'm going to show you how to actually upgrade this. Let's spawn this in like a Pokemon, open up our inventory. And this is where we're actually going to go into our upgrades. So for each tier here, we need to kind of place the tier in for the frame, for the engine and for the balloon. And what we want to do is hit the green button. And that is going to thus upgrade this machine. So if we now break this, you'll see that this is now a tier two airship. It's a different color and looks a little bit different. Um, so it's going to kind of go like that, but you can literally just upgrade this whole thing all in one go. If you have all of them made, all you got to do is continue to do this. There you go. And each tier, like I said, is going to do something different. It is going to either help your flight height, help your fuel efficiency and things like that. Uh, change your max altitude um, and your speed and all that good stuff. So keep upgrading all these until you hit five. And this is literally the best airship you can make. You can see right here, we can now hold 500 redstone. Um, our speed is plus five. Our fuel is at a negative 10 and we can go up to 200 on the max altitude. That's without any other upgrades because there are further upgrades that you can add via modules. So yeah, there's just a lot of stuff you can do here. So let's go ahead and start adding redstone. And this is how we're going to customize our ship. And we don't even have it fully. We don't even have the 500 full put in there, but we're going to start customizing your ship. I'm going to name the ship. Let's see. 
Let's name it McFly. Perfect. And that's going to cost us 10 redstone to be able to change the name. We can go back, and whenever we get out of this thing, we can now see it actually has a name attached to it. That says McFly. Very cool. Um, the customizations are really, really fun. On the frame, we can now choose it to be studded. I actually have a design that I really like, um, and that actually lets us change the whole color and scheme of this thing. So let's go to the balloon, and I want to choose this big old balloon. That's my favorite. When you get out, you can see that's what the balloon looks like. And we can go back in here. Um, on the engine, I like the dual engine. You can kind of see it changing down there. It's very, very minimal, but I like the dual engine. So I'm gonna apply that. And the frame, I mean, you have studded or non-studded. I'm gonna leave it non-studded for right now. And then we're gonna take a look at what it looks like studded after I'm done with everything else. So we can now unlock, we've unlocked more customization. We have all the customization unlocked. So we can change all these different materials. We can set it to tons of materials, glass if we want to. Um, you can set the color. So if you want a very specific color, you can do that. You can set the transparency, and make it transparent. I like the ender. I'm gonna apply the ender and I set it to transparent so you can see through it. I really like the, that version. Um, and then we're gonna go to engine and we have an option for 4th of July apparently. This must be in an update. Um, support or supporter heads. I don't know what the 4th of July, I guess that's going to be red, white, and blue. Um, we have symbols. We can choose Forge logo. I think we can even specify a specific item if we want to. So if we wanted to place a head in here, I think we have a dragon head. We can do that. So if you open this up, customize, we go to engine, blocks, and items, we can specify a dragon head. Hit apply, and that is going to put a dragon head right here, and it's going to rotate there. Also, it's going to put a dragon head on the side in an item frame for us on both sides. So that's really cool for customization. Um, and then I think we can also change the particles. Um, I actually like the flames, and the rainbow flames are nice. Um, let's do, I'm just going to do regular flames, apply, and that's going to add like flames to the back end of our ship. And now for the balloon, the pattern that I like is the ender balloon. So let's set that to ender, apply, and then set it to transparent. And then go back and take a look at what this looks like, right? So it looks pretty good, but I actually prefer this to be studded. So. Let's go into options for core, frame, make that studded. We're going to need a little bit more redstone. So let's go into our redstone. We'll add some more. Customize, core options, frame, studded, apply. And now I think this thing looks really good. Look at that. I, I really do like it when it's actually studded like this. All right, and the only other thing left to do is to put our fuel in, which goes over in this slot. And that activates it. And remember, X is to descend. Now, if you feel like feel comfortable changing that, I like to change mine to control for the descent. So options, controls. And I think it's Viscraft. You can just do VIE. And I like to set mine to left control. I mean, it just feels feels more comfortable doing that. But be careful, if you hit shift, you will dismount. And then you'll just have to wait for your ship to slowly come down. All right, so let's talk about something else. You can actually have animals end up inside this. Or mobs can get inside. I don't know if animals do, but mobs can definitely get inside. And I mean, it looks like we can, wow, can we literally carry a cow inside? That's a screenshot. Wow. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. But if like a mob gets stuck in there, that's where you have this. These right here. This dismounts players and a dismounter. Um, this will dismount entities. So if you right click on this with your 
uh, right click this on your Viscraft machine and say there is an entity in here like a zombie, you can actually dismount that automatically so that way you can get in. Also, this thing can carry bombs if you put upgrades on it. So you can actually have weaponry attached to the bottom of this thing, which I think is really cool. Now let's take a look at the flames. This is what the flames look like coming out the back. You kind of see there are flames particle effects. Um, and that's what's really cool about this. Also, when this is max upgraded, I mean, this thing is pretty fast by default. And has a really long flight time. We have like one hour and 30 minutes on a st single stack of fuel. And we can fly incredibly high with this thing. And also, you have that really cool steampunky vibe. So if you're playing on a multiplayer server and you want to go visit your friend, you can go show off your epic Viscraft machine. Pretty cool, guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.